Hello, this is Greg with Microsoft. Thanks for joining to learn more about the Power KPI Custom Visual. If you are tracking progress toward key performance indicators or KPIs, this is a great visual to use. Power KPI provides maximum control over both the look of the visual as well as the business logic that drives the indicators. Here is a Power KPI visual. You can see the different elements including the title, subtitle, current date, status, and values as of this date, a rich line chart with multiple series, optional legend, line and color formatting, tick marks, and reference lines. Power KPI allows for many different styles. I'll show a few examples in the sample file. Here are some smaller sized tiles useful for packing many different KPIs into a single report or dashboard view. You can see many of the elements have been toggled off or hidden. This example down here shows the left layout view. Here's a tile with a high contrast retro CRT look and feel. At lower left is a version that maximizes the chart spaces, removes the axes, and labels many of the data points. Upper right, here we have a more compact format using the left layout. And at bottom right, we have uh, the right layout and it's showing a grayscale pattern version that's nice for accessibility. Here in the format pane is where you can find the different layout options, including an automatic layout where the visual tries to decide on the best layout based on the dimensions of your visual. The auto scale feature will dynamically reformat your visual as you shrink the container size to ensure readability of the most important aspects. This also works on dashboard tiles in the Power BI service. In this way you can have both a highly detailed tile and a compact summarized tile without having to author two different tiles. So here as I shrink it down you can see different elements are hidden as needed to maintain the visual. Let's walk through the creation of a new Power KPI visual. First I'll show you the sample data. Here I have a column for date and you can name these columns however you like. And they can be in any sequence you like. The next column is my actual key performance metric. Here it's called actual units. The next column is called target units. This is my comparison uh, that'll be used to determine my performance. The next column is just another uh, series I threw in there if you want to show another series on your line chart for comparison. And finally, the column called uh, KPI fixed here. This will map uh, to the index number of the KPI symbol and color that you want to show. And you'll see that uh, when I show the binding to the visual. The last two columns are uh, calculated columns for your own method if you want to automatically set thresholds for your KPI uh, index dynamically. And I'll show you that. Now let's switch back to the report and create the Power KPI visual. Apologies, my mouse cursor is going to show above where I'm actually clicking. Here is the Power KPI visual icon I'm going to click, draws the container, and now I'm going to add my actual units. And you can see that's been added to the values in the field list. And then I'm going to add my target comparison. And you'll see now that shows below. The order in which you drop the columns into the values is very important. It, it determines uh, what will show as a KPI, etc. The first thing that you drop in is your KPI metric. The second one is uh, your main comparison. And if you want, you can have a secondary uh, comparison. But let's start with just two. The next thing you need for anything to render is you need something on the axis field. 
it's generally a date column. And you can see it draws at this point. So it doesn't have to be a date. It can also be a categorical uh, type of uh, data type. So at this point, I already have most of the Power KPI visual complete. You can see the line chart with the hover over tooltips, the legend. The, uh, what shows here is the latest or most recent available date um, that's available in your data set for your KPI for the first column that you dropped on to the values field. Uh, corresponding with that date, you get the number of actual units here, and you also get a variance, which is automatically calculated for you. That represents the difference between your key performance metric, the first thing you dragged into the field list, and your comparison, or the second thing that you dragged in to the field list. If I were to add a third series here prior year, you can see it draws a third line, and a secondary variance is shown for free up here. Uh, and it also shows in tooltips. The only thing missing at this point is now my KPI indicator symbol itself. And so down here you can see KPI indicator index is the name of the field. And if I drop in my column here from my model called KPI fixed into this index column, there you go. You'll see um, now I have a symbol showing there. Now we can jump over to the format pane and you can see the extensive list of customizations. Under layout, I've already shown auto scale. Um, the auto layout, um, by default, the visual will try and pick what it thinks is the best layout. So as you can see, as I squash this, it'll move to the left layout automatically. Or you can manually just choose whichever layout you prefer using the list here. Next, you have a title. You can customize that uh, subtitle. You can change the font size, the font color, the alignment. To format the KPI indicator itself, under the format pane, KPI indicator, you'll see there is KPI 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that those mappings correspond to the KPI indicator index in the field pane that is bound to your data. If you'll recall, in our data table, we had KPI fixed with one, two, three. Those values literally map to the KPI indicator symbols and colors shown here under one, two, three, or four. You're allowed to have up to four different KPI indicators. So here is where I could sh change either the shape or the color of my different uh, KPI indicators here. You can see some of the different colors and shapes. If I wanted to define and set automatic KPI thresholds right here in the report, rather than in my data, I could do that. Um, here, the way I've done that is to create a calculated column. And you can see my calculation here. Um, here's my KPI index DAX formula that's created. So what I'm saying here is if my variance is greater than or equal to 5%, um, use index number one, symbol number one, uh, otherwise, if the variance is less than 5%, use symbol number three. Um, and if it's neither of those two, use symbol number two. So um, this is all explained in the sample file. There's some sample DAX for you to use to create your own thresholds. So all I would have to do here, instead of using that fixed uh, KPI column that I have, I could then um, swap this in to my field list under KPI indicator index. And now it's using my dynamic calculation that I've set up here in the report. 
Again, this is all explained in the sample file. There's a tab of basic instructions. There's a tab that goes through setting up your KPI indicators with both methods that I've shown. And uh, finally, there's some commonly asked questions for um, advanced formatting. Um, and I can show a few of these right now. Um, one thing I want to note is you can rename anything. Um, first of all, you can title or add titles and labels to all the elements that are shown in the visual. With the July desktop release of Power BI, you can also rename your data itself. This is supported natively in Power BI Desktop as of uh, July 2017. Uh, you just go to your column and you either right mouse click it um, or you double click it and choose rename. And uh, you can then give it whatever name you want and that name is used in your visual. Um, otherwise, you can rename everything, like I said, uh, including tooltips. You could come down here and change the label that you're giving to your um, tooltip. And then you'll see that um, appear in your tooltip. Another um, common question is uh, on decimal places. Um, by default, it'll say auto and it looks grayed out and disabled. But rest assured, you can just go right in and just directly type in the number of decimal places you want to see. Another question I've seen is for people that uh, like to make use of these primary and secondary variants uh, labels up here, but they may only want to show one or two lines down here. So you can do that. Um, so in the visual, what you would do then, um, instead of using the automatic variances that you get, you could drop in your own variance, either through a, a calculation that you've added here or from your model column itself. Uh, either way, take that column and drop it on um, to your field. The, here's the uh, KPI indicator value. I could drop it there. Um, and then that way um, you wouldn't have to have um, all the series on there. I could even eliminate all of them and just have one series and I still get a variance because I'm using the variance from my model instead of using um, the delta auto calculation that's done by having the additional series. Thanks for joining and watching the video. I hope you enjoy using Power KPI Visual and I encourage you to provide feedback and rate the visual at the office store.